Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Michael Sanders. I'm an environmental specialist with the City of Dallas Mosquito Control Division. As you all know, last year was very challenging for us. We were overwhelmed with an increased mosquito population and we had an unprecedented West Nile virus outbreak. This year we're calling on the general public to help us prevent a similar outbreak by doing a couple of simple things. But first, let's get acquainted with the carrier. There are approximately 85 different species of mosquitoes in the state of Texas. The most common carrier of the West Nile virus is the Culex quincy fasciitis, also known as the southern house mosquito. Mosquitoes do not develop in grass or shrubbery, although flying adults frequently rest in these areas during daylight hours. All mosquitoes must have water to complete their life cycle. Life cycle consists of four stages, egg, larvae, pupa, and adult. The female lays eggs in rafts on top of stagnant water. Within a few days, the eggs hatch into larvae. Larvae or wigglers come to the surface to breathe through a siphon tube. Larvae feed on organic material in the water. Pupae, also called tumblers, somersault through the water. They do not eat at this stage. The adult mosquito grows inside the pupae and when fully developed, splits the pupal skin and emerges as an adult. It only takes seven to 10 days to complete an entire life cycle. Let's talk about disease transmission. Mosquitoes bite a bird that is a carrier and then they bite a human as an incidental host. Humans are not necessarily the primary favorite meal for a mosquito. The major diseases of importance that we test for include St. Louis encephalitis, dengue fever, and of course the West Nile virus. The best way to prevent mosquito breeding is to eliminate the sources. Not all water is going to become stagnant. Not all standing water will breed mosquitoes. Water has to be in a very warm environment and it has to be very still in order to be a positive place for mosquitoes to breed. Let's talk about some of those sources. Ornamental ponds, bird baths, yard equipment, various containers, trash cups and cans, especially roofline gutters that get clogged up with leaves and debris, ditches, old tires, and swimming pools can all be breeding sources. However, not all swimming pools are going to breed mosquitoes. This particular pool is a breeding source because it's well below the line for air to move the water around. It becomes very still and very stagnant quickly. The pool on the left looks like it would be breeding, but it's not. It gets a lot of wind movement, which does not allow for the mosquito to lay its eggs in. The pool on the right is below the surface and therefore doesn't get as much wind and was stagnated and had a lot of breeding going on. Hot tubs and jacuzzis are a problem because they're usually well below the surface area. They don't get the wind and the mosquitoes are laying their eggs there in abundance. Pool covers and drains are a problem. Covers sound good when we first put them on, but when the rains hit, they become a mosquito breeding source. Drains and pools are covered and we forget about them. And they usually hold enough water and they're very warm and dark, so they're a great place for mosquitoes to breed. Even old abandoned boats can be a breeding source. The waters stay in there, they're covered, and it's nice and warm for mosquitoes to lay their eggs and breed further. And remember, anything that will hold water can breed mosquitoes. Let's talk about our prevention and control efforts. The city uses a system called Integrated Pest Management, or IPM. This is the optimization of pest control in an ecological and economical manner. An IPM approach includes a variety of techniques, including education and outreach, surveillance of mosquito populations, source reduction to reduce the opportunity for mosquito breeding, larviciding breeding sites to kill the pre-adult stages, and adulticiding to kill the remaining adults in order to further reduce the breeding populations. We have produced educational pieces, including flyers, brochures, and handouts for the public. We are conducting multiple town hall meetings and neighborhood association meetings where we will be teaching citizens the best way to prevent mosquito breeding and fight the West Nile virus is to practice the four D's. At dusk till dawn, stay indoors. This is the time of day mosquitoes are most active and most likely to bite. Dress in long sleeve shirts and wear pants. Defend yourself by using insect repellent and carefully follow the label instructions as each one can be different. And here's the most important thing. 
drain standing water in your yard and neighborhood. When we talk about assessment and surveillance, we talk about doing a larval count using a dipper to determine whether we have mosquito breeding in a given body of water. We also set out mosquito traps to catch the adults. We will have over 90 trap sites collected each week this year to determine whether we have any, not only mosquito breeding, but the presence of disease. We also will rely on dead bird reporting. Citizens call 311 to report dead birds, and we will chart them on a map. If there's an abundance in any given area, and we don't already have a mosquito trap in that area, we will put one to determine whether we have a disease present. As we discussed, source reduction is the best way to get rid of mosquitoes. We need to be recycling our tires, getting rid of them, draining the standing water, working together as a city to dig the ditches out to make sure the water is flowing well. Biological control is another method we use. Gambusia finesse is a mosquito-eating fish that we introduce into large bodies of water. There are many natural predators to the mosquito that are present in water throughout the city. We use the mosquito dunks. We also use a topical oil that suffocates the mosquito larvae in streams and creeks. When we need to, we use larvicide. Again, it interferes with the growth of the mosquitoes so they cannot become adults. In the worst case scenario, once we've detected disease in a, present, in a given area, we will use adulticiding or ground spraying. The city of Dallas focuses mainly on preventing mosquitoes from becoming an adults. We mainly use larvicides that interfere with the growth of the mosquito from the larvae stage into adulthood. If you find standing water in one of the areas we talked about, call 311 to report it or get rid of it yourself. To learn more about what we are doing at the City of Dallas this year to reduce mosquito populations and prevent West Nile virus, check out our website at www.dallascityhall.com.